So what's different? I mean, basically, um, as a result of all the uh, restrictions that have been applied, it's not going to be possible for us to have face to face ARCPs in the usual way. Uh, similarly, a lot of education faculty will be um, under pressure to give clinical commitment. So what the four nations have agreed to is a process where we can have streamlined panels uh, with fewer members, but they will be equally robust and they will take place using the virtual media. Uh, and we've had a couple of test runs of that, how we do that um, in the Northwest, and that seems to have gone very well. Equally, we don't want to burden trainees and trainers with um, assessments uh, that make it difficult for them to collect and, and review the evidence during COVID-19 when they're working under intense pressure in the clinical background. And the whole idea of the derogation and the process is that trainees should not necessarily be disadvantaged as a result of circumstances outside of their control. So, for example, if an exam, which is an exit exam and a requirement to progress, has been cancelled because of COVID, the trainee should not be disadvantaged in terms of the outcome that they receive. And that was the trigger for developing the decision aids that have been, has been published and will be followed by college specific uh, decision aids and indeed the derogation with the outcome 10. So next slide, please. So what we want to do is try and make this process as normal as possible. So we do want as many people as possible to be able to progress. The checklist and the decision aids will be available both to trainees and educators and the panels in advance of your panels so that you know what the goalposts are. Um, and all the evidence and the requirements for the ARCPs, they may be different because they've been amended by the specialty, but they should be submitted in the usual way in advance of the ARCP. And this is really important you will still have to, trainees will still have to put a Form R in and have it uploaded in advance of the ARCPs because they still have to make that full scope of practice declaration because of course their ARCP is equivalent to their full scope of practice appraisal. Okay, next slide please. So these are the key documents which you probably can't read but I just put them there for information. So there's the ARCP decision aid, which contains right on the last page, the derogation. And then you've got the coding for ARCPs, which are the C codes, which I'll come let back to. Uh, at the end of this presentation, the links to those documents are there and they're all available on the COGPED website. OK, next slide, please. So this is the outcome 10. And these are the principles. It's a no fault um, outcome. The, the, we have what we call non-standard outcomes. So outcome two, three and four, um, the progress has not been at the usual rate expected for the stage of training. So in that for I, uh, concept, it's a non-standard outcome. Whereas if you get an outcome 10, it recognises that your progress overall might have been satisfactory, but you haven't been able to acquire the some of the capabilities. And as a result, you won't, either won't be able to progress and will need additional training, or you will be able to progress, but your training will need to be targeted in some way to allow you to acquire those competencies. Next slide, please. So this is how the outcome 10 has been written on the derogation and it, it is exactly in the same format as the um, 4.91 in the goal guide which lists the relevant outcomes. Um, so that's just how you'll see it and you'll see here that there are two forms of the outcome 10, the 10.1 and the 10.2. So if we move to the next slide please. So how do you use a 10.1? So the 
a no fault outcome and it's equivalent to an outcome two. So what it's basically saying is that trainees have not been able to demonstrate required capabilities and they've not been able to demonstrate them because of the impact of COVID that it has had on disrupting their training programme. But those capabilities can be made up at the next stage of training. So trainees who get an outcome 10.1 can progress to the next stage of training. They may require additional training subsequently. And what will happen is those competencies, that competency gap will be reviewed at the next scheduled ARCP. And if they haven't made them up post COVID at the next stage of training, at that stage, it is highly likely that they would need additional training. And that would be on a conventional ARCP outcome three. And the reason we put that in and we put that in the wording for the 10.1 is trainees, it shouldn't come as a surprise to trainees after the 10.1 that if they don't make up those competencies, that they'll, they'll basically get an outcome three. An outcome one is like an outcome two and therefore it's subject to review rather than appeal. So this is the outcome 10.2 and this is very similar to a 10.3, uh, sorry, an outcome three. And this is used for trainees who've not been able to demonstrate the required capabilities and those cannot be made at the next stage of training because they're at critical progression points. So somebody say at the end of core training who can't progress to um, higher training uh, because they haven't uh, got a required exit exam that has been cancelled uh, due to COVID um, and that would have to be a 10.2 because it can't be made up um, at the next stage of training. Um, if you're on a, if you, if your critical progression point is that you're at, at the point of CCT, it would have to be a 10.2. You can't get a CCT, um, well you can't be given a CCT on either outcome and you can't be at the point of CCT and get a 10.1 because obviously you can't progress to the next stage of training because that's completion of training. Uh, and just like a, an outcome three, a 10.2 is subject to uh, the appeal process. So now I'm just walking you through. So you're in an ARCP and I think the first question you need to ask when you're reviewing the evidence and deciding what outcome is, is this what first bullet point? Has the trainee met all the requirements for satisfactory progress or completion of the training programme? And if the answer is yes, then it's straightforward. You use the usual outcomes. So you can give, if they can progress to the next stage of training because they've met all the requirements, it's an outcome one. And if they're at a CCT point and they've met all the requirements for completion of training, they get an outcome six recommendation for a CCT and they're gone. So if we move to the next slide, that's the flow chart and you will see the red arrow is down the left hand side, the left hand arm of the flow chart. And that's basically what happens if all the requirements for Saturday satisfactory progress or completion that you don't use an outcome 10, you use the standard ARCP outcomes. OK, but if the answer is no, we move on to the next slide. And then you have to ask, well, they've not met, met all the requirements for satisfactory progress. Why? And if the reason is due to COVID, then you would consider an outcome 10.1 or 10.2. And I'm just going to remind you that when the cutoff point is, because Stephen's, uh, Simon Stevens' letter uh, repurposing the NHS uh, in response for COVID was dated 17th of March. And that's when the government um, had indicated that we were moving into um, a high level um, incident uh, state. So what you would have to be clear about 
is had this trainee, was this trainee on track and then something happened between the 17th of March and the ARCP that meant they couldn't demonstrate the required competencies. And if you're convinced that is the case and the, there is evidence for that, then you can give them a 10.1 or 10.2. If the reason they've not demonstrated the competencies is completely unrelated to COVID, then it's a conventional um, ARCP outcome likely to be a two, three or worst case scenario, a four. OK, so that's the middle arm. So was the training affected by COVID? Yes. And that's where the red arrow points down. And then you decide. Are they at a critical progression point and they can't make up those competencies? If they can make up the competencies next stage of training, it's a 10.1. If they can't, it's a 10.2. OK, next slide, please. So this is the tricky one. So a trainee was likely to get a, an outcome two or an outcome three, or they might have had an existing outcome two and outcome three, and they've come up for their review. But the ARCP is after the 17th of March. So the panels need to exercise their discretion and make a judgment. Um, is the reason this trainee has not made progression, has it been impacted um, by COVID? And I think we probably are going to have to give tra trainees the benefit of the doubt because most of them probably we're already go heading for an outcome two or an outcome three. But we may never really know if COVID hadn't happened, whether they would have been able to turn it round in those last six to eight weeks before their ARCP. Um, it just depends what the competency that's short of, of that, that's missing, that hasn't been made up. Um, I mean, worst case scenario is you give them an outcome three and they appeal it and at appeal we decide well actually it probably was impacted by COVID and we'll just convert it to a 10.2. So it's not a disaster but I, th I think we, we need to be using this as best we can and exercising the discretion. Okay next slide and so that's the right hand side of the arm where we were would be expecting to use the normal ARCP outcomes. The training's not been affected by COVID and that doesn't account for the lack of progression. So it would be usual outcome two, three or four. OK, next slide. So the C codes, the C codes are new and these have been introduced to help the panel describe the reasons for the lack of progression. And unlike the U codes, you don't have to use just one C code. You basically use as many C codes as you need to describe the reasons for the lack of progression. And there are 13 of them. And one of the things I would suggest when we're running panels is we have a copy of the derogation and the C codes available to each panel member so they've got them at hand so you're not shuffling around trying to work out or remember uh, which C codes you need to use. The N13 code is not new it, it's the other reason and basically if you have not been able to reach a decision and reach an outcome or convene an ARCP panel for any reason, then you would just record it as an N13 other code and just in the free textbook COVID-19. OK. So these are the couple of questions that in developing this, um, my team came up with. So what does the panel do, the ARCP panel, if the educational supervisor's report's not available? And again, I think the first thing you have to, the panel has to ask is, why is it not available? Is it because the supervisor hasn't had the capacity to do it due to COVID? But there's alternative evidence that you can use to make the judgment. And we are introducing what we call a trainee self-assessment form, which is where they rate their, they try and explain their experiences and what outcome they think they should get. And then all the ES has to do is validate that, you know, is the do you agree with the trainee self-assessment of progress? 
yes or no um, and if yes fine if no if not why not so it's really easy so there may be if there isn't a formal educational supervisors report there may be other places that you can look for the evidence to give a, a, an outcome and therefore you would give the appropriate outcome 10. If it's not available and it's not unrelated to, and it's in, unrelated to COVID then you would normally give an outcome 5 and what we're trying to avoid is giving lots of outcome fives when the reason the ES report isn't available is due to COVID and there was alternative evidence. OK, appeals. Um, obviously, we do need to have an appeal process, but it is going to be different in in terms of um, how we run the appeal process due to COVID. And in fact, it's been signed off today and circulated to you, I believe. So we've come up with um, an appeal process, uh, which means we'll be able to undertake appeals um, using the same virtual media and have a small, smaller panel consistent across the four nations, which allows uh, representation from the trainee and uh, from the management case. Uh, and we'll try and run those within the same time frames of Goal Guide 8 and get as many of them heard in a timely way. So we've now got 30 days after the decision to hear the appeal, um, which I think given we're not going to have to get quite so many people together in the same room, might actually be easier to arrange. Um, this was one issue that came up when we were developing the appeal document. Um, what do we do about uh, somebody who's been given an outcome two or a three and they believe they should have had an outcome 10? Because currently the only way you can overturn an outcome um, is to give, you know, like you can overturn a four and give a three, um, but you can't overturn a three and give a 10.1 at the moment. And actually, when we wrote Gold Guide 8, we put in this um, ability for the dean to make derogations and exercise discretion um, which means actually we can we can over, overturn a two at review and, and give a 10.1 or we can overturn a three at appeal and give a 10.2 so again don't be afraid um, that in giving an outcome three you're going to mess up the appeal process. If you genuinely feel that's the right outcome, then have the courage of your convictions and give that. And as I say, if the trainee objects, well, it goes to appeal through due process and we will take a second look at it. OK, so those are the reference documents. They're all available on the um, COPMED website and um, it has been updated because the eagle eye of you will notice that the first derogation didn't include 10.1 and 10.2 it's just a single outcome 10 and we've taken that one off this morning and we've put the revised derogation up so everything's aligned.